Be bold. A heart to a hard rock. Mod Pie marched a short distance, then stopped. She turned around and marched to the opposite direction, again stopping only after a few steps. Then she turned to her right to face Boulder, who was sitting patiently on the wooden crossbeam of a fence. Boulder. She said simply, making sure that he was listening. Once she had his attention, she continued in a low, monotone voice. I know some of the other rocks and minerals like to pick on you sometimes, but it can't go on forever, and I won't always be there to protect you. What I'm saying is, you have to be... Boulder. Maud paused to allow Boulder to laugh. Somehow he held it in, but she still knew that he liked it. Jokes aside, I really do mean it, and I'm not asking you to fight. Some of them would crush you, literally, she said, punctuating her statement with a slow blink. What I'm really asking you to do is to be yourself around them, and not just yourself, but yourself with confidence. You may be a hundred times my age, but you've been underground your entire life. I actually have the experience advantage here, and you will be surprised at how much better they treat you when they don't sense fear. I used to be like you, you know, believe it or not, I was actually very antisocial, I know, shocking, but like nice through geologic uplift, I rose above it, and it all started when I realized I just had to believe in myself. And you should believe in yourself too, because I believe in you." Maud placed a hoof on Boulder for emphasis, giving him one of her rare small smiles. He absorbed the information and accepted the comforting gesture with contemplative silence and stillness. "'You know why I believe in you, don't you?' she asked. His lack of reply was answer enough for her to continue. "'It's because you're special. Not only do you have a slightly higher magnesium concentrate than any other rocks in your area, you're also the youngest basalt specimen I've ever found here, and that means something to me. You may only be 5.5 on the Mohs scale of hardness, but you're a 10 on Mod scale of hardness. Boulder had no words, and Mod spoke on. The reason I'm saying all of this is because I care about you. I want what's best for you, and after I'm gone, you might not have a pony like me to take care of you. So you'll have to learn to take care of yourself. It'll be slow, as all geological processes, but I'll be with you for as much of it as I can. I want to tell you a story, she said. She then turned around and took two steps away from him dramatically. Still facing away, she continued. I used to get picked on in school. Ponies thought I was weird. And let's not call an achondrite a pluton here. I knew I wasn't like the other foals. I was weird. But I let it bother me. And it kept me from doing what I love. Even my own parents thought I took rocks too seriously. They've always just been simple farmers, not quite so dedicated to the study of rocks as me. Well, one day when I was sorting a box of andesite, my sister Pinkie Pie parged into my room and caught me red hoofed. I couldn't hide my collection in time, but instead of laughing at me, she just smiled, and she said she loved seeing me happy. It really woke something up inside me. And despite her being there, I just kept sorting. Then, just as I finished, I got my cutie mark. I still haven't told Pinky how much of a part she's played in it. She just thinks I like rocks, which I do. I love rocks. But she convinced me to believe in myself. You know what my cutie mark is? It's a boulder. Kind of like you. I don't think it's just about rocks though. I think it also marks the moment I too became bolder. The moment I learned that it's okay to be the pony I am. Well, once I embraced it, 
Bulls at school didn't make fun of me as much, and sometimes they even came to me with rock-related problems. They really made me extrusive. I mean, extroverted. That was a joke. She paused and turned her head to look at Boulder. He was still not laughing, and she would get him someday. You're the best friend a mayor could ask for, and I hate to see you having the same problem I did, especially because I know the situation to it. So, what do you say? Think you can give it a shot? She asked, turning her body to face him. Boulder paused, unanswering and unmoving. His eventual nod was imperceptible, literally. There was no actual movement, but Maud still sensed it. She breathed a slow sigh of relief. She felt hope for her friend welling up in her, and a single tear, like pride-given liquid form, dropped from her expressionless eye. Stepping close, she gathered Boulder in a warm hug and placed him into the front pocket of her pale barrel smock. How about we go test your newfound confidence in the gravel pit? It's good to start small, after all, she said. At the gravel pit, she selected a hoof full of playmates and set them in a small pile on the hard, compact dirt, with Boulder into the center. As she watched them play, she thought of her sister, making a mental note to remind of her how much she matters the next time that they met. One piece of gravel suddenly toppled over, prompting Maud to intervene. She pulled Boulder out of the pile and kicked the offender away, holding her friend up to inspect him. Got a bit rowdy there, huh? You okay? She said. Boulder was paralyzed with fear and uncertainty, though he didn't reply. She felt that she knew what he was conveying. No, you did fine. It was a good effort. It's not all gonna happen in one day. You just gotta keep it up. She said. Now, come on. Let's go home. As she walked homeward, she decided to say something that she wished that she had heard more herself when she was young. I'm proud of you. Hey everyone, so this is the first outro this channel has ever had. Don't know how to feel about that though. But anyway, I'd love to give a big thanks and a big shout out to Chill Out Josh for helping me out with Mod's voice. Couldn't have done it without you man.